Um, so basically, it, they infuse in antibodies that are similar to the antibodies your your own immune system would make if they faced COVID or if they'd been given a vaccine. Um, they have to be. It has to be given within about five days, and it's only approved for people who we think are at higher risk of requiring hospitalization or possibly getting severely ill. Um, so it's for a small number of people, but it seems to be quite effective in terms of preventing hospitalization. So so it's it's one new tool in uh, in in the tool belt to try to help people with COVID-19. And with the numbers of, of treatments that are arriving, is that going to meet the needs that uh, we are going to see with these rising numbers? Well, you know, there, there's, there are, an, is another drug that's also very promising, um, uh, molnupiravir. Uh, it's an antiviral drug, so affects the ability of the virus to re reproduce itself. So there's a lot coming up. It, it's a, it's a, you know, there's a lot of research in this area. Obviously, there's a lot of interest in trying to improve people's outcomes from COVID-19. But the problem is when we open up, we expect hundreds of thousands of cases of people with uh, the infection. And so there's no way we're going to have any anything close to sufficient medication to make sure that everyone gets a dose. We probably won't even have enough for people who are at high risk uh, to get a dose. The other thing is that if you've had symptoms for more than five days, or if you're sick enough to get into hospital and you didn't um, didn't have the chance to get the medication, these medications don't really work for you. They only work when you have mild disease uh, and stop the progression. They don't they don't help when it's already progressed. Yeah. And the antiviral that you mentioned there that uh, Merck announced uh, just a day or so ago, that hasn't yet got approval in the US. So it's a way off before we would see any supplies. That's right. Um, you know, uh, Greg Hunt announced uh, today that uh, they were in, in discussions with uh, Merck. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I would imagine that it will be approved quite quickly. Um, but it's hard to know uh, if it's going to be quick enough for when we really start to open up. In, in any event, it will be great to have uh, another important um, uh, uh, some uh, thing that we can use. Um, but, you know, it's always important for people to remember they're not as effective as vaccines, not even close to as effective as vaccines. So these are in a really limited group of people, people who are early on in their disease and at higher risk of having severe consequences, and they work about 50% of the time. So that's going to help a small group of people, not a big group of people. You compare that to vaccines, 90% effectiveness for reducing hospitalizations. That's in everybody. So we're going to have a much, much, much bigger impact. And it's really important that people don't think, oh, well, I can always get this treatment, uh, and so I don't need to take the vaccine. Well, you know, if you're sick enough to get into hospital within two days, you're probably not going to have gotten this treatment. Yeah, not going to help much then. All right, let's talk to about two vaccines that have been approved here to push for the return of international students. Um, is that why this is one of the Chinese uh, vaccines and one of the Indian vaccines? I mean, is that wise, given they aren't as effective and that could really add to the caseloads here? Well, I mean, one of the Indian vaccines is basically AstraZeneca. So, um, you know, I think it, it's very similar to what the FDA has done in uh, the United States. Basically, they're considering um, vaccines that have been approved by the WHO. Most of them are being uh, considered approved for the United States. You know, and if we're going to say basically, you know, you need to meet very high bars to be allowed into Australia with what vaccine you've received. Well, you know, we have to think about us going to the United States. AstraZeneca is not an approved vaccine in the United States. They, they never went through the approval process there because they had enough of other vaccines that they got earlier. Um, so basically, they're allowing us to come to the United States, even though we don't have an approved U.S. approved vaccine. And it's not as effective in terms of preventing any infection, very infect effective in terms of preventing hospitalization, but not as effective in preventing uh, any infection. So you know, to say that we're not going to allow someone uh, who's been um, vaccinated with a WHO approved vaccine into Australia when we're hoping that and we know that the United States is going to allow us in, I think is a little bit much. Yeah, no, that's a good point you make. And of course, we're also talking about boosters and there's so much discussion around, you know, what combination of vaccines might be really helpful. Uh, they're getting boosters in Israel and they're going to start doing that in the United States. Is it possible that this is going to, again, just be another weapon in the arsenal against COVID, having booster shots, different, even different types of vaccines as we, you know, continue down this journey that's not going anywhere any time soon? 
Well, absolutely. And in fact, with Pfizer, um, it, there's some thought that it actually might be a three-course vaccination. So that really we, we got the vaccine out. We thought it was two, two doses of vaccine and then you're done. But it may actually be that you need a third dose for Pfizer. Um, so I think that, you know, there's going to be a lot of people getting different types of vaccine over their life course. So that's not going to be like you've had one type of vaccine and that's the last vaccine you'll ever get. So I think there's going to have to be some latitude in terms of what vaccines we accept. Although clearly we want to accept effective vaccines and ones that don't have issues with um, the supply chain. So, um, you know, Sputnik V, it's a, a bit controversial. That's the Russian vaccine. Many people have received it, um, but that hasn't been approved in the United States. It hasn't been approved by the WHO, and it may not end up getting approved by Australia because there are concerns about production, although it seems to be an effective vaccine itself. So there are a number of things that can affect whether a vaccine is improved, approved or not, not just how effective it is, it's also how reliable we can we we think the um, the actual um, vaccine production is. Yeah, Nancy, I really appreciate you coming on. Thanks so much. Thank you.